Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another podcast of the show, To the Hilt, where we're doing a question and answer session. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Somebody wrote a question and referenced why it seems like the evil ones worldwide all seem to have a hive mind. Now, what is a hive mind? Well, if you're talking about a beehive, everybody has their own job. The queen produces workers. The workers go out and forage for food to make honey. And others are builders, build the hive, build honeycomb. Everybody has a job. And for example, ants. You have ants that collect food. You have, uh, well, they're worker ants. Then you have soldier ants that protect the hive. And then you've got the queen that produces more workers. So... A hive mind means everybody seems to be focusing on a job and everybody's going, I guess you could say, to the same place. They're all, all the politicians worldwide all seem to be of the same mind. That's what they mean by a hive mind. Almost no dissension. How can that be? I mean, are they all robots? I've had people throw out, oh, well, you know, it's all AI, artificial intelligence. Well, it can't be because we didn't even have computers, so to speak, you know, 50 years ago, so to speak, uh, not like they are today. Computers didn't really start having major capabilities until the pretty much... Oh, I would say probably you could say the 90s. So there's another explanation. So let's investigate that. All right, let's go take a look at Mark chapter 1. This is going to be a fairly short question and answer period. Uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 30. But Simon's wife's mother... Now, it's funny, uh, Simon is Simon Peter, Apostle Peter. His wife's mother. It's funny, the Catholic Church says uh, uh, Peter was the first pope, and we're spo uh, they're supposed to be, if you're a clergy in the Catholic Church, you're supposed to be unmarried. But here it is, the person they claim is the first pope has a wife's mother his wife's mother Peter was married so I guess they just you know the Vatican just kind of makes things up on the fly right but Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell her of him who are they telling Jesus and he Jesus and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. Possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many. Who? Who healed? Jesus. And he healed many that were sick of divers' diseases and cast out many devils. He cast out many devils and suffered not, didn't allow, and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. So these devils are able to see with spiritual eyes and they could see that Christ was the Son of God. 
So he didn't want them to talk because it wasn't time to reveal that information to the multitudes or to the apostles, I should say. Mark 3.15, and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Mark 1.39, and he preached, Jesus, and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Hmm. In, in Mark 8.30, I'm sorry, Matthew, Matthew 8.31, there was a man possessed of many devils. Well, let's go ahead and read it, I guess. All right, Matthew 8, 28. And when he, Jesus, was come to the other side into the country of the Gadarene, uh, Gergesenes, there met he two possessed with devils. All right, so two men, they're full of devils. Some people call them demons. Coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pa pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? It's funny, even the devils know who Jesus is, but most of the world does not. What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to tor torment us before the time? See, even the devils know that there's going to be a time when they're going to be disposed of. Verse 30. And there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding. Swine, pigs. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer, or allow, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. So they were possessing these two men and they know Jesus is going to cast them out, but they're like, yo, dude, let us go into the pigs. That's the uh, Hilt translation. Verse 32. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And they that kept them, the pig herders, and they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coast. So there, can you imagine that you heal a couple of guys and they're afraid of Jesus. Well, they're probably full of sin and wickedness and are afraid that uh, they're going to get the same treatment. I don't know. But even the pigs were smart enough to know they don't want to be possessed of devils and they would rather die than have a devil inside them. So, ah, uh, boy. How does how do people get to that point? I don't know. I've heard Satanists actually uh, brag about wanting to have or having devils inside them. It makes you wonder. Luke 8, 2, And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, uh, disabilities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Wow. Uh, let's see. Well, let's take a look at Luke 8. I should have uh, read this first, but verse 26. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. 
And when he, Jesus, went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. He was bound with chains, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. So here it is. Can you imagine a, a human being able to break the chains? But it's actually the devils. You ever wonder why karate experts are able to do all these supernatural things like breaking boards and what have you? Uh, maybe they're possessed of devils. I don't know. Verse 30. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion. Now, what is a legion? Well, in the R in the Roman army, a legion was between two and three thousand, depending upon if they were at full battle strength or what have you. But it was between two and three thousand. Um, in the modern army, a legion is equivalent to a brigade or what they call a regiment. So that's like uh, three to five battalions. And a battalion is like three to five companies. A company is generally about 200 men. So, uh, all right, so you got that idea. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils, many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there and heard of many swine swine feeding on the mountain and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them and he suffered them he allowed them and then you know the story yeah they the um you know the herd ran down the down the steep slope and drowned wow verse 35 Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Very interesting, I think. So, yeah. And another quick one, Matthew 4, 24. And his, Jesus' fame, went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he, Jesus, healed them. Now, what is... The unpardonable sin. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 3. Mark 3, verse 22. And the scribes, the scribes were the copiers of the Old Testament Bible. That's where we get the word scribble for writing. I think it's in Spanish. It's scribben, scribble. I mean, it's... Scribing, I don't know. Uh, it's a, it's it comes from the Latin. It means to write. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, "He, referring to Jesus, he hath Beelzebub. Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies. You know, and what do flies land on and eat? Dead things, right? So they're basically calling him the." Uh, Lord of the flies, the devil of dead, dead things. 
So they, they're saying, he hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. So basically they're accusing him of, by the power of Satan, casting out the devils. Verse 23, And he, Jesus, called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, then he will spoil his house. So if you want to steal from the rich man, you better tie him up and spoil or steal his goods. That's how it works. Verse 28. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven. That's rape, that's murder, lying, stealing, all those sins, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation because they said, He, Jesus, he hath an unclean spirit. Beelzebub would be an unclean spirit. They claimed that Jesus was possessed of a devil. He was demon-possessed, they claimed. They were blaspheming the Holy Spirit because the Holy Ghost was performing those miracles and they were claiming it was actually the power of Satan. And there's only one group of people in the world that teach this. One group. And I don't even want to mention who they are because of the algorithms. But they... Uh, just let's just say they claim to cling to the Old Testament and uh, it uh, sort of rhymes with um, church pews you know you sit in a church pew and listen to sermons yeah so it rhymes with that pew word Uh, so, yeah, P-E-W, right. So, uh, yeah. So, why the hive mind? Are all these politicians possessed of devils who are giving the same marching orders by Satan and his captains? You know, Satan's kingdom is pretty much set up like a military unit. You have Satan at the top, and then he's got his generals, and then his colonels, and then his majors, and then his captains, and his lieutenants, and then his sergeants, and then his privates. And it just goes down the line. And everybody gives the people under them the hive mind. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Everybody go in the same direction, doing the same thing. Where are these devils today? Bible doesn't say doesn't say they you know they said please don't torment us before the time they're still here on earth read job chapter 1 hmm they're not in hell yet not to my knowledge i don't believe so i could be wrong but i i don't think so so if there was a third of the angels that fell from he heaven in Revelation 12, there could possibly be millions and millions of angels. 
So, what are these devils that are possessing people? Well, the short story is this. The early, what they call the church fathers, uh, people that sat at the feet of the apostles and who sat at the feet of people who had sat with the apostles, people like Polycarp, people like Irenaeus, or Irenaeus, I've heard of the name both ways, um, people that lived in the first century after Christ, their theory was that when the fallen angels in Genesis 6, the flood of Noah, had intermarried the women and had giants for children, and no, I don't get this from the book of Enoch. I get it from the Bible. You know, Goliath, giant, six fingers, six toes, uh, yeah, you know, do, do, do believing men marry unbelieving women and have giants for children with six fingers and six toes and then God says go into the land and kill them all? No, it doesn't make any sense. So the sons of God in Genesis 6 went in under the daughters of men and they had giants. And if you want to know who the sons of God were, read Job 38. Because they shouted before the foundation of the world. Adam didn't come until after the creation of the world. So these sons of God could not possibly be men. Can't. It's just impossible. So, you have all these giants running around. They're half human, half fallen angel. And then they drown in the flood. Where did their spirits go? They don't go to be the Lord in, uh, in heaven. That's for sure. So what the early church believed was that these devils were the spirits of these dead giants and that they were looking for a body to inhabit. Maybe they want to enjoy physical pleasures, you know, food, uh, Relations with the opposite sex, I don't know. I don't know. That's just a theory. Bible doesn't address the origin of these fallen angels, uh, the fa these, these devils. So the Bible isn't about the angels. There's times when the angels are mentioned, but the book of the Bible is the book of Adam and via Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, and Jesus Christ, especially the Redeemer, the Son of God. That is what the Bible's about. God's relation with Adam kind. So, to me, it makes sense that these devils probably are the spirits of these half-human Half fallen angel hybrids that were drowned or, or killed, and uh, they look for a body to inhabit, which is why they went into the herd of swine. In Matthew 12, verse 43, Jesus speaking. When the unclean spirit, a devil, is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and find none. So Jesus casts out the devil. So the devil's walking around through dry places, seeking rest, and he doesn't find any. Verse 44. Then he saith, I will return into my house. You see, they consider possessing a person or an animal, a house. I will return un into my house from whence I came out, and when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first." 
even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. See, if you're possessed of a devil and it gets cast out and you don't get saved and indwelt by the Holy Spirit, devil's just going to come back and he's going to bring seven friends with him. Well, some friends, right? That's how I see it. So, that's my take on it. Uh, that is my best educated guest. So, all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Bobcast as some wanted. Bob Hilt here. To the hilt. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.